it's on brand and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Um, well, so that I don't have to get beat up so much. When are we going to get... Uh, I'm thinking like the, the milestone for this discussion is, I know I always love to skip ahead, but 576 people, that's 24 people for a week <clears throat> building a block in Kansas City, Kansas. Now, now, Bob would be madly in love with that. Everybody would be. But we start with one build. So there's one build, one build. I'll take a look at the crit. Let me, let me share my screen. Um, let me share. All right, I got to give you permission. I was just looking back through shit, the nut plant out of 2016, nursery here. I mean, I ran a full nursery here. That's all the, uh, the first year we had so many different things. I was just looking back through stuff. So anytime I'm kind of practicing mindfulness to be grateful for various things. Um, can I share my screen? Yeah, you should be able to now. Uh, is it? Are you seeing my wiki? My wiki? I'm seeing. Uh, go, yeah. You're back. We're at the wiki. Do you see the critical path? Yes. Okay. So so here's what it looked like, and this is a crazy mess here. Um, I, I send this link, but this is kind of what it's looking like there. I mean, build one, August fifteen then we have a bunch of weight but here we can do these like if this one is fixed if we are stable what are we validating logistics materials acquisition any des mainly outstanding design issues is, is this fixed is this product or are we going to have to change anything so but we can't do the second one until we make those changes so there's going to have to be like a two month gap there you see uh, but if this is a product freeze, then we can do two and three pretty quickly towards the end of October, and that would still give us enough time. October, November, we could still pull this off. I'd like to do three, man, because I'm looking at what are we validating here, and I'm saying, I'm seeing um, like all the logistics, material acquisition. I think the material acquisition is going to be a big deal. Like, can we really replicate it? Um, and that's where that, that uh, truck and trailer comes in. We're going to, like, as we purchase things, we put it all on the trailers. So we have one trip to the build site. And that's how we can take care of the logistics for materials. Um, otherwise, the due diligence for land, like that, we got to verify that that's doable on a short time scale. I say, well, that, that's, that's a process we can put an operations manual to that, okay, we got to tie how to do this so we can replicate it in the future. Because... After these three builds, I should be in a position where I've got the operations manual that allows others to, to do it. I'm going to hire you as a crew leader. Right. right, right you should right. be able to, to take, take that operations manual and work with the people that we have with the team. And yeah, whoever is the, the crew leader should be able to take that. And without my involvement, move forward not with that. I mean, I'll be working I think my role would be to, to really uh, be working out the curriculum parts um, like during the apprenticeship time that's probably what I should be doing a lot doing a lot of curriculum so we so we're evolving that from the house to the machines to the 3d printers and all of that because that's that's gonna be well house there's CB slash tractor those I think are the two main milestones after that uh, like the tractor plus brick press. I mean, the whole thing started with bricks and now we're kind of like faking it with wood, um, which is cool, but it's not. Did you know that wood is the same embodied energy as concrete per weight? It is, you look at the data, it's amazing. But the thing is that wood's got so much intense material handling, all that gas that is burned to cut the trees, to move them, it's just huge, huge logistics operation. Um, kind of like military scale logistics operation. So, um, I'm kind of liking concrete, but uh, earth, earth is local. It's much lower embodied energy. If we do a little bit of stabilized, stabilized block, I mean, that's replicable anywhere in the world. The wood isn't as highly replicable. It's only, well, it's not replicable in the tropics. 
So CBs does you for tropics and temperate zones. Okay. That's the um, <laughs> right. <coughs> uh -huh. it, anything you want to discuss about Martin? I mean, he yeah. pretty much said eight hundred's not possible. He made it seem he made it. You know, I don't know if he's managing our expectations or what, but like he made it sound like it wasn't even close. Yeah. You know, the thing I I, I think the part if I there's a thing I would point out that I didn't like was that he didn't appreciate what we actually have. And that was, I told him, well, I'm, you know, you know, I'm trying to communicate the message of GVCS and that we're building all this shit from scratch. Uh, and when we threw the open source microfactory, he's like, you're going to actually build all the tools? Well, yeah, that's the core of it. I, I felt he was kind of uh, not fully up to speed to the actual potential of what he could be supporting. Because if he doesn't get that, yeah, that, then, then I believe that his support uh, will not be as great. Now, what level of support are we going to have? That's a completely questionable. Um, I think I the mean, strongest I, point I, there is the possibility of building housing for them, which is a real possibility, right? Right. I, I'm... I think it's hard for somebody who hasn't seen it. I mean, even you have Bridgeport Mill machines in your workshop. Yeah. yeah you know, like... <clears throat> I think I think the point you're just you you are kind of ships passing that night. Like you're making the point that it's possible to to build the machines you need to build the machines, and he was looking at it more from like a business point of view, which is like, okay, that's great, but we have to start someplace. And so if the option is create these machines on our own or purchase off the economy to create a fab lab, like it, in the real world, buying them off the economy is a more straightforward solution. Yeah, but that's I, all. Can, I can tell you the counter argument to that. That's the reason why the Fab Lab ain't, ain't changing the world. I mean, you can. some people will say Fab Lab is changing the world. It's a possibility. Sure. But right now, it's, a, it's, a, it's an elite's playground. It's not exactly. practical production. So here exactly. we're talking about practical production, and that, that is the value proposition that I don't think a lot of the people get, and that's, uh, but that is the core of what we're saying. This is replicable, lower cost. I mean, the, th the fact is, with a fab lab, you send it to Africa, and the first thing that breaks, and that, throw it away. Exactly. Right, 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 right. right. Um, but that was also in the context of he, he – I, I almost sent you a message directly while you were answering that question, but you're kind of on a roll, but like – I was under the, like, when he asked the, what's the 50, like, put this in context of the 50,000 foot view, I thought he was more asking a general question of, like, like, what's, what's the global problem you're trying to solve here? Like, how do you fit into the, the big picture, right? <clears throat> and my answer would have been more, I mean, this is not super useful because, like, we have hindsight and the conversation's over, but, like, my answer would have been more, like, um, a fundamental limitation to how we progress as a species right now seems to be the conflict, the, the human, sticky human shit. Like, we have technologies that can vastly improve people's lives, and so we're we're trying to directly address that sticky this. human shit. Uh, so, just FYI. All right. But keep no, keep going. This is good. I think are you is, are you recording on your end? I'm recording on my end. I, I think this yeah, is a okay. good overview of the kind of big picture view of what we're we're struggling with. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, it, I'll, I'll just start over just because I lost my train of thought. But like, <clears throat> the big picture. Um, mm -hmm. Like, fu like fundamentally, you're about collaboration and bringing people together, rallying them around a common goal, inspiring them to improve themselves and their environment, make the world better than they found it, basically. Yeah. And that at the core, that's what OSC, the GVCS and the CD Go Home and the apprenticeship and the education program, like the whole, all of those pieces fit into a 100 year vision of moving society towards more collaboration, less proprietary focus, more, um, abundance um, and through building communities you know um, I feel like I'm word vomiting at this point but 
No, no, no. That's you jumped. That's essence, right? Yeah. yeah. But no, you jumped right into yeah. the the technical. Like, <clears throat> I think you. I think you were you were somewhere between pure technical and pure vision. Um, and like his thoughts around the fab lab and everything. I think that was more of just, you know, in the in the context of the fifty thousand foot uh, vantage point. To him, FabLab is a successful enterprise that has done something. Yeah. You know, and um, that I think that's just a known reference point for him in that conversation. And there's a lot of a, a lot of about what you're proposing that's extremely radical. And I think it's easy to lose sight of the fact that really, at the end of the day, what you're doing is you're giving, like, just your average hu human beings the tools and the inspiration and the knowledge they need to just make their environment better, to, to make their lives better, to make the world better for their future generations. Well, uh, you said uh, hindsight. Well, I, I would say if there's an important message that we, we need to communicate, you should uh, send up a follow-up and say, hey, this is, uh, this is just to keep at the 50,000. Because I think, yeah, I did yeah. that, but I was assuming that he's very savvy in the, the kind of stuff that we're talking about, and therefore I can't right. do that. Yeah. I mean, uh, one of the Novo, like in their FAQ, there's a lot of, questions about like you know what are the values of Novo why does it exist what's the whole point and a lot of the the copy on the website is oriented around like the 500 year time frame yeah the 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 emphasis on individual human beings and their welfare um and I just don't want to lose sight of the fact that like OSC could end up looking different from what we think it's going to look like but if you get a depressed community like Detroit to come together to build their own factory, like there's a lot of ripple effects in the social fabric that are really positive as a result of that. And that that's that's the real magic. Yeah. And like the frame I put on it, and of course this is serving my biases here, but like what I see absent from things like Fab Lab and maker spaces and trade schools is the full spectrum problem solving that OSC provides. So like income skills and a sense of purpose. Like trade schools provide skills, they cost money. So they, they're really only addressing one. Fab Labs you know, help create skills and maybe a sense of purpose, but there's no institution that I'm aware of other than like existing apprenticeships that solve the income problem for people so that it's an it's a feasible thing for them to spend their time doing on top of giving them something useful that they can then better their lives and their communities with. Um, that's well said, and I think that's a, that's a good... Uh, you think maybe you want to communicate that to Martin? Because I... Do we um, cover it? I mean, I, my preference would be to wait for a follow-up conversation. Yeah, because I think he like I think he gets it. Um, there's I mean like there's a couple data points we have to. You know, I, I in other words, I don't think it's going to add anything to. Okay. He's already over the threshold of wanting to help us. Yeah. You know, he, he's already, he reached out to you in the past before you were at the point that you're at now. You know, he agreed to take this meeting and he agreed to a follow-up meeting. I think we're just in the process right now and he's got his own bureaucracy to contend with. So let's wait and see what he says. Right. And if it comes up as a, like, I'm still fuzzy on how this fits into changing the world for the better, then I think, you know, we can add clarity to that. But um, no, I think, I, I think it went well. I think it went really well. Yeah, and <laughs> I couldn't believe this, man, uh, regarding, he reached out in 2018, and it must have been a bad time, but I basically told him to gee it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I had a little conversation on the internet, but uh, as far as I recall the, the website, I wasn't impressed by the website, and I failed to scroll down. Um, <laughs> that... <laughs> that 
these guys have two billion dollars that they want to give some of them to us. <laughs> well, I mean, it, you're. I think if you embrace the fact and like this, this should be a good learning point, which is like, what are, your biggest liability right now is that it's just you and Katarina basically toiling away. Right. Right. And something's got to give. And I think if the lesson that you take forward from the past 15 years is that um, progress depends on a wider network of support, then that's just a part of your learning process, man. Like, I, <clears throat> I don't think we need to rewrite history or litigate the past. It is what it is, and you've learned, and you know you've changed your approach. Um, no, I, I, or not I, even change your approach, but like you're just at a different place now than you were in 2018. Yeah. That's an important. I mean, on the positive side, it's true too. Uh, I basically said, okay, we've we've published. You know, you can build some of these things. You can build a tractor, brick press, maybe printer, or um, power cubes, and because he was basically asking just just to review this, he was asking how how can we use this in Kingston, New York, to help the community. And um, I, at that time, we were actually heavy into the steam camps and developing the micro factory stuff, like the 3D printing. And for some reason, kind of skipped skipped through. But the point was that I don't think I was even thinking that, oh, well, the recognition that I did not have then and that I have now is how much effort it takes, actually. So when I get approached by a, an offer like that, it's like, well, what are we going to do? Well, now I know it's actually, it's going to cost you more than you think because it takes resources to take from, take from doing effectively a pilot to something that moves the technology forward in a significant way. And my learning right now is that that's a million bucks a pop. That, that's a realistic figure to get that to the level that you're meeting and exceeding industry standards in the marketplace. Now, that's not a small sm statement either. It's a huge statement that, um, if replicable, then this, this is billions of dollars worth of potential. So, so it's a big, big statement. But people completely underestimate. I need to use the saw. Should I saw the power? No. Um, I think. I <laughs> Um, we're off grid. She's saying she can she use the use the saw, or is our internet connection gonna go down? I told her, nah, this <laughs> is fine. We're sunny. Oh, you're off grid, so your solar's yeah. up. Yeah. Nice. Um, yeah, we just basically replace the batteries to a small, fresh bank. But um, thing is, uh, I don't. People like to unless they're from a business and like. Uh, serious entrepreneurs who have successful companies, they don't recognize that. This is not about a little pilot here and there. This is what we're actually saying is what we say is we mean. We we actually mean reinventing a kernel of civilization that can fit in a couple of of shipping containers. That's way beyond what anyone can can even <coughs> consider as feasible. But it also costs. Um, now, the good part is because of the modularity and, and the integration of it, it's not as intractable a problem as people think. And that's what I've been learning like every single day. Every day this is becoming more and more real. Like just for example right now, what I would like to do for the next workshop is this effectively the rebar truss structure. And for the specific reason that rebar is found anywhere, so this is actually replicable in Africa, but the beauty is that it's being designed for vertical stackability. So I actually went through the initial design, uh, and so for the 5,000 square foot workshop, it's $37,000 of materials, primarily rebar, but then you can go to the second floor for another $37,000, the underlying structure gets you that. Each 20 by 20 foot bay has a live load capacity of 11,000 pounds, such that we could even be building heavy <coughs> machines on the second floor and stuff like that. So, for practical purposes here, we actually want to, I do want to go up in vertical space because if you really want to get this whole micro factory thing going, uh, man, we'd sprawl all over the country, all over the countryside. We wouldn't have enough land, so we actually got to go vertical. But things like that. And, um, but it's like, I don't know anybody who makes vertically stackable buildings, and we're we're talking literally. the The roof is going to be flat. We're going to have a landfill liner plus ballast on top. So you basically take off uh, the ballast block. Underneath that, you have a rainproof surface, 
and you're ready to build for the next story. So actually, with with one day of work, you're actually ready to actually go up to the next story. So that's that's a realistic thing that we're actually we're going to test here, and part of the practical. Uh, massive replicability potential of that. Like if you can get a $37,000 building per floor that actually goes up, man, that's cool. Anyway, um, long story yeah, short, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is like too far out and for me it's like, oh man, this is just so immensely beautiful because uh, I'm actually doing the numbers and have the welding experience and 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 purchasing, ex you know, just knowing the materials that, oh yeah, this is actually doable. Cool. Um, yeah. If we were to redo that conversation with Martin, and he asks, you know, how would this fit in potentially with the work I'm doing in Kingston? To me, the, the right answer, the answer that we should give in the future is an affordable housing solution that's also a job program. Yeah. Or a self-sustaining affordable housing solution that's also a job program. <clears throat> that's it. I mean, like it's it's truly affordable it's creating the skills and perpetuating the knowledge they need to continue it so it's it's adding to the labor force you know <clears throat> i mean that it, the answer is it's almost too obvious mm -hmm. um and i think on our next call like one thing we should lean into is the potential for kingston to be a, uh, you know if they're going to give us money and we're going to turn this thing into reality um Kansas City is obviously the starting point, but Kingston could be the first export. You know, it could be the first part of America that, you know, generates this program. Really, is what you're developing. They get the instructions, they get the built, you know, the list of materials they need, and we ship out crew leaders and prove that as an enterprise, it can grow someplace other than Kansas City. Yeah, um, yeah. I think that fits with their vision, you know. In, the value proposition is so, uh, you know, it's a single family home at half the price of market, not even a third of the price, really. You know, what would it mean for Kingston if people could, you know, how many, yeah, I, I don't need to explain it to you, but that's, in, in a nutshell, I think that's what is truly valuable to, to the work that they're doing and like as you said they're a potentially huge and valuable partner if we can yeah yeah so pr you know pr prove the model in their own backyard yeah i was also assuming that we had like an hour and it was actually only 45 minutes so we didn't like mm -hmm. you guys didn't get a chance to speak anything i just went off <clears throat> that's okay i mean he doesn't want to hear from us he wants to hear from you really it could be that it was only just who is this person and we're perfectly sure. fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, explain double, two or three times lower cost than industry standards to me. If I were to ask, or he's he's going to ask you, what what would you say? I think I think median home price is four fifty. Yep. Well, and average, uh, I, mean, you know, I don't know if that's me median or mean. That's median. Um, mean. Median. An actual mean is five fifty. Yeah. I just had that note from Ken today. He gave me that that info. With increased uh, material costs, you're still well under. Yeah. Uh, now it's the size is smaller, mm -hmm. but it's still a starter home that can readily evolve into that, and that's that is part of the part of the value proposition. You can get into a house at one half to one third the cost of industry right. standards. Um, yeah, so where do you want to go from here? I mean, I, I, can we, should we, even though Brian's not here, should we just double, like check in with the glide path and see? Yeah. You know? um, yeah, you want to look at, look at my screen or? Yeah, you can drive. Well, so glide path. I mean, I'm not sure what you're saying that we're on schedule. I don't think we're on schedule. We may be, but no. Look at it. We're, why? Why do you say we're on schedule right now? Um. 
I don't remember how long ago this was, but we're we're coming up on the June two week mark of when you estimated documentation to be done. And so my understanding was was the the documentation has to be done before you can get the engineer stamp of approval yeah, and then begin the yeah. permitting process. And then the permitting process is out of our hands and that's sort of a time where we go operational and start developing, okay, you know, hmm. how are we forming the team? Where are we building this? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, by, by that, regarding the documentation part, yes, the, according to what you said, yeah, that's, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, how's that going? Yeah, I mean, I think, well, I mean, the last levels of details, I mean, you know, this is the this is an interior plywood, so this is what the model looks like altogether. But it's got quite a bit of detail. If you peek inside, I mean, man, behind our kitchen, it's, uh, it's, got, it's got even you know, all the plumbing and stuff. It's all the guts are in here. Um, so yeah, this is pretty detailed. Uh, now getting into even, so if you take off the whole roof, just even like, you know, here's the trim boards and stuff like that for, I mean, that's that's good. And in, in the documentation path, I mean, uh, I'm documenting it very carefully so that, you know, I keep my working doc here, like with gory details of, <clears throat> of everything. So when we're actually ready to engage, so next week, I think. Do um, you want to call? You know, just just exhaustive detail. So when we're ready to just give it to the engineer, all we do is export the CAD model, and we say, okay, prepare our package effectively, because I mean everything is in the model, so uh, it's pretty pretty cool. I feel good about the model. I mean, the model completion is that is like the big, 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 big thing. Um, now, so here this kind of represents this, like the CAD, the, the super detailed CAD right here up to June 1. And then this is where I wanted to talk to Bob and, and Brian. Do, are we going to go for that land acquisition? Because the th the, basically the thing is the two weeks versus six weeks permitting time. The engineering is going to take two weeks, right? Um, now, this here, June 1 to July 1, is means taking a look at this and just building out like for example everything that we've got in here like for example you know like all the plumbing and stuff inside the walls like and the basically the plumbing and electrical uh, that needs to be built out um, so that's this month here and then we got the engineering and for St. Joe it would be a one week permit and for for Kansas City, it would be a six-week permitting time. So this is where we—that's really what we have to decide on. Are we going to KC? Or are we going to going to St. Joe? Right. So I mean, we really need to talk to Brian because this because that means the build one here. That's assuming St. Joe because because that if we were to do build one in KC, that puts us at instead of there, it puts us. So mid-August. But my my intuition here September. is that a six-week engineering process or a, some approval process, regardless of its engineering or permitting, whatever it is, if it takes six weeks, that's valuable time that we need anyways to prep for the build. Because there's, there's going to be a turnaround time to develop the oper operational plan and form the team. And obviously contingent on funding as well. And so, like, if, if he comes back and he says, I can give you guys $100,000, like, that is bare bones, like, to, fo to form the team to get the first house built. And I don't, I don't, to me, I don't think a shorter approval process is really the limiting factor. I think the limiting factor is going to be, are we ready? Do we have 24 beating hearts uh, who know what's going on? Right. And I, you know, give, given Bob and Brian, I think Kansas City, like, 
that stands out to me as assuming the six week time lag isn't gonna we're gonna need that time anyways like i don't see why not can't say especially if it's easier to get land and the market is more attractive so do you see the distinction between um between putting it on open market versus a person like brian because the open market price would be we were going uh looking just looking at the initial numbers the concept there was 60k materials 50k building uh 50k building process of labor so we're at 110k and then that's us working for free so we need to get paid something for that if we sell on an open market, we've got a bunch of other costs that may total up to say 140. But market sell, market value of a house like that would be 180. Or, well, or what I say between 180 and 240. Or let's I mean, say 180 say, and 200. When I say market, I mean more in terms of like if it's if if the f debut CD home occurs in, or is built in Kansas City. The opportunity for follow-on excitement, I think, is greater in Kansas City just because of the, yeah, you know, the efforts that Brian, it, like all the shit happening in the Blue River Valley, to me, is a good place to focus our efforts, especially from like a marketing standpoint. Less, less from like a, how much money are we going to sell it for? Because really, the first house is probably not going to make any money, right? Probably like. It's gonna there. There will be several houses that need to get built and sold before this thing becomes profitable, and that's normal. Well, that was an assumption I was holding on on this one because um, uh, is that so? So so okay. So if the sale price is one eighty, I mean I'm counting costs to one forty, so. Where's that 40k nonprofit? I'm I am assuming, and and again, this is oh, not Bryce. based on any hard numbers. I I am assuming that we were we will just have startup costs related to forming the team and the plan that are going to push us well past 140 or even 180. Right, and where is that money coming from? And the, the only source we have that's clear option right now is the the Nova Foundation. Right, right. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna do what we can with what we have, uh, and so like maybe it's a bare bones operation. We rely heavily on existing excitement around OSE, and we can't have the fully fledged model. You know, the like ideal model ready to go where our crew leaders are paid professionals and the according to like our projected labor costs but regardless of what it looks like i mean i for me for this thing to to turn into the enterprise that you're designing and building like um there's i think there's a lot of overhead that we're not factoring in we're not it's not that we're not factoring it in it's just I'm that's assuming reasonable. that's going to be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because, like, I'll give you an example. Like, for the first build, if I had a magic wand, the way I would want to do it is get the six crew, identify six crew leaders, select them, and then run them through a one to two week course just on how to read the instructions and teach people and how everything fits together and tour the rosebud. Like that, that is an expense, right? I would want to pay a site manager whose sole purpose is to manage inflow and outflow of material um, and like the logistics around the job site. Like <clears throat> that's what a smooth running replicable operation would look like. And right, you want to say, can you wave to march in? <laughs> so, um, it just in principle, I'm anticipating a lot of costs There's, related to just getting it going and yeah, replicable. Yeah, we don't have a we don't have a back end that can support that. That that would be my work, and I'm you know 
working hard and getting tired kind of thing doing too many things at the same time yeah so so there's costs okay. that right now are pretty much externalized to 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 my suffering i mean it, it, but it's not it's it's these are things that like are going to help you they're going to they're going to relieve that oh yeah and, that's the advantage you know, and, so, and, and yeah. it to me to me the discovery process of arriving at the right answer is going to be the next conversation <laughs> with martin figure out how much money we're going to get figure out when we're going to get it and then each one of these events leads to a uh Ne a new phase of the planning process because our running estimates and assumptions are constantly changing. So yeah. we don't have to have all the answers right now. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. No, it's true. We need to build up that infrastructure that allows it to go go on its own. And that's, this is an opportunity to get that extra time in the permit process would get us, um, I think, some of that required time. Because I guess, honestly speaking, what's missing, okay, in this critical path here, what's missing to build one? Okay, we're saying we're going to acquire land, we're going to do engineering, and we're going to get a permit, but we don't have a crew in that time. So some that's got to be... I mean, if you do that, then then we do have a crew. There's there's John working on crew, crew acquisition, building a crew. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So here exactly. So so what if that happened? Would that be realistic? I mean, I honestly don't know what's realistic, but it becomes more realistic the closer we get uh, to having. The, the more concrete answers we have about funding and land and the house being ready documentation wise the easier it is to build the crew because now I've got answers to like when would I have to yeah. show up how much would I get paid like all right. of the you know and so um, I'm really sorry but uh, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to last with this crazy yeah. lady okay uh, yeah no problem we do need those answers, like Brian. Um, maybe we should um, have another conversation, set up another call. Well, well, we yeah, I'm sure we will. Um, but I don't, I don't know that any. Oh, oh, we know. can't do it right. until June one. Not, not it's not June one, but like whenever our next meeting with Martin is, like that's the next oh, batch of information. It I tells us how much resource we have to work with. Right. It gives us a constraint. And then, you know, more importantly, you there's plenty of stuff for you to be doing in the meantime in terms of documentation. So, like, it's not as though that time, it's not like we're spinning our wheels wasting time. But the plan has to kind of play. Like, we're uh, letting the situation develop is kind of how I look at it. Okay, what if there is no resources coming from de novo? Oh, what happens then? But we have to rely, we have to go back to plan A, which is bootstrapping, which involves, you know, a conversation with Brian about payment, client, you know, um, or we look for more funding. We make fundraising a key task that we have to accomplish. Oh yeah, so you would go fund me. I mean, or maybe there's other grants. The question would be like, like Brian, who just put that together. You think you can work with him to do something, or that's something of, uh, to wait, wait until we hear from Martin, or is that something we do like right now? Of course, in your ample spare time. Uh, in terms of. Uh, working out the details with Brian? No, over. actually pursuing, I, if you want to be aggressive, oh. I'm pursuing schedules that, that they're not shifting. Because by the way, I was quite proud that this might be getting to within one year of accuracy. But mm -hmm. to minimize the risk on that, yeah. we should be proactive and, and fundraise, maybe. But that's up to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I never did it because because I've got other things to do that I think are in the long term are more yeah. valuable. But in the immediate term, they um, see. But it, but if you if you could do it, then I would always. I mean, I, it, I I regardless of what happens with Martin, that should always be 
something that we're working on fundraising so like that said i'm not sure an answer between now and when we speak with martin is going to be super valuable like like i I don't think we're in a position where i need to go out and find a funder as fast as possible um because to me when i go to a funder and say will you donate to the cd home project i want to be able to say we have the instruct like here's our here's our complete plan for how to build this thing. Literally, all we need is the money to fund it. Like we've thought through labor, we've thought through material. All I need to do is press this button, and we're good to go. Um, I want to be closer to that point before I go to a funder and just say like this is a great idea that you should get behind. Okay, okay makes sense. sense. And and you're already doing that. Like you're already okay chipping away. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So I think uh, the summary of this is we wait. Uh, uh, See what Marty does, back, and then we go from there. Now that said, if you go to, um, I'll drop the link here in the chat. This is this is what I've started, the work I've started in terms of the. Uh, um, and actually, I should give you edit permission. See a tree? Oh, that's a tree. This tree is a big old fat tree. Here, use this link instead. So this is obviously just a framework, um, but you know what I'm trying to do here is give us a manipulable. Is that even a word? A, a oh, template yeah, we good, can man. manipulate based on various inputs. Um, and one question I did have is I separated out like the preparation costs, a lot of what I just talked spoke about, with the actual material costs, like the cost of goods sold to produce each house, like materials, delivery, storage, like whatever else we think of. Mm -hmm. For the material costs, I've been looking at the bill of materials and notice that you separate it out in, in different separate sheets, like interior walls, foundation. Do you have a convention that you're following that sums up the total costs or total expenditures for each of those? <clears throat> no. That, so the thing that, the thing that you're seeing here has got all these tabs and this is not organized like there's things that are deprecated and stuff like that, so there's no real totals. Uh, you'd have to really extract all that info, and that's because we're, so this is a finishing tab, and we're still at like, okay, here's now, we haven't gotten the PVC plumbing. Actually, we want to do that this Sunday, like PVC, electrical, like uh, plumbing, effectively, plus, um, Trim, I mean trim stuff. So, yes, yeah, so there's a lot of info in here. Like this, this has the entire cost. But the question is, which materials did we actually use? Because there was also some changes we made and okay. stuff like that. So, that that's what I was going to. So, <clears throat> in other words, one possibility to get the full material cost is to take the CAD and oh, then yeah. do a part by part search. Absolutely. Okay, got it. I just want to make sure that like that's that's the direction we're going because that. It, that will be more accurate. It just won't be done yet. Yeah. So it'll take some time. Yeah. Um, it's like in the CAD, you can separate, you can you can identify all the two by four members, right? And all yep, the exactly. sheets of plywood, right? Okay. Cool. So for example, uh, I'm gonna show you this. No. And just a heads up, I've got about 10 minutes before I got a roll. Yeah. Um, so if you look at, so here, so you're gonna, I'm gonna teach you how to download this file, or you go into, well, let's go into the plumbing system. Well, look at that. So you can study that if you understand that. If I don't know if you understand these parts, but you can actually take a look at this and look at all the yeah, files sure. and you see, oh, there's this part, there's that part, there's that part. Um, and 
But take a look at the, the, the detail there. Like, see, that is one, one item in the part tree. The whole thing is actually. So you actually have to go into the separate file, which has got this all broken up. But that's but it, we're at that level that we actually have all the parts. You can go into the CAD. There's some things like, oh yeah, well, you have to know what that is. That's actually like the tail piece and it's missing like the screw in part and stuff like that. So a plumber would be able to figure this out, but unless, so we don't have that 100%, it's maybe like 95%. Um, but yeah, that's the kind of level that uh, we can, like at the place where this is 100%, then you can go, go to CAD, you can go to BOM, you actually can select the parts at Menards Home Depot, and then you can go to build instructions. Like a plumber would, for example, tell you, oh, okay, you build this in this sequence and stuff like that. Um, but that's, um, yeah, that's, that's that. Right, but, so but, for, but for easier things, like, get it, yeah, like first to, floor, to, like, to, yeah. To, to get to the, the, the goal is to have a, a single spreadsheet yeah. with every item that we have to purchase to build the house to get to that point we have to go into the cad and the individual components and then marry that with what exists on the market yeah right so um so like a thing that you can actually do for example you can take a look at this thing oh okay that's a two by six you can actually measure it that's uh two by six base plate there, two by six, and they're so long, so you can count, okay, one, two, three, four of these verticals, bottom and top, right. and some right, of these right. pieces here. Yeah, you can do all that. And here's your window module. That's, you have the exact structure for exactly how it is. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah. Okay. So what's our next step then? Uh, let's wrap up. Our next step is, um, you continued working on documentation. We're going to wait to see when Martin wants to talk to us again and go from there. I mean, documentation is still the... It, it, we're in an ideal position for you to work on that because there, there's nothing else that's important right now. Like, the funding is on autopilot, and, and every other decision hinges on the funding question. Okay, so uh, as far as meeting with Brian regarding potential of KC versus elsewhere, that's that's a post-funding decision. I think so. I mean, in, unless it always open to the possibility that he has new information for us, but you know, w one thing we if if you want, we should just have a, like a weekly meeting with him, anyways, just to talk through the updates in the situation on, on the ground in Kansas City. Yeah. Because like we know we there, we are pre fairly certain we're going to get something from Novo. Some like we don't know what it is, but we're fairly certain we're going to get something. We know that Kansas City and St. Joe are currently in contention for the first location and so it may be worth revisiting that conversation about where are we building the first house and how is this going to go down um, given that we just finished that conversation with Martin. Yeah. Okay, so I'll send this, this video for Brian's review and see if he has any comments. And then after he views the video, let's see if he, uh, what he says regarding a meeting. Yeah? Okay. Sounds if, good. If, I, if we don't hear from him by you know, Monday, then I'll send out a, a proposed time just to do it. Okay. Okay. Well, sounds good. Sounds good. We're moving forward. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Get some rays, man. Get, get outside. <laughs> Get some fresh air. Okay. okay. All right, man. Give my best to Katarina. Thanks. Bye. Bye.